I came here because they said there was a Marine in here, and all I found was some old washed up pasty white boy who was sitting there making YouTube videos in his underwear. Says he's gonna squat this though. Guess we'll see. I've been making so many rant videos and talking about so many different things that it's been a while since I've actually done anything useful for the lifting community. And uh, a lot of the new people that I'm talking to, people that are new to my channel, have expressed that, you know, they want to get into lifting, but they have mobility issues. And it kind of took me back to when I had lost the use of my leg back in 2019. Now, I was just under 600 pound squat at that time i was 585 590 really coming along and then i had lost the use of my leg uh basically my sciatic nerve got completely pinched off i had an injury in my l5 disc and that whole nerve cluster i literally lost the use of my leg on top of that it was one of the most extremely painful things i ever went through in my life and i had i just start from ground zero uh now why is that relevant? Well, see this little, this is an oil change ramp minus the wedge part. They kind of come in half. And I use these blocks for just about everything. They're eight inches tall. Um, now, you, you don't have to use an oil change ramp, but essentially what this is is a split squat. Uh, we've all seen guys do like Bulgarian type split squats where they'll put one leg back and they'll dip down to their knees. And uh, for people that are coming back from injury, or have an imbalance, or are older, or have ankle mobility issues, doing things like that are just, you know, beyond our skill set, you know, especially when we're starting from ground zero. But if you can do a parallel squat or a quarter squat, you can do these. And what's great about these is it gives you the all of the pluses of a split squat, but the leg that's on the box maintains your balance. So, you know, for people that have mobility issues, this is a really, really good solution. Now, what are you sacrificing? You're sacrificing range of motion. You're sacrificing, you know, really isolating the legs and getting the full benefit of like a Bulgarian split squat. But for the most part, you would get, I would say, 80% of the benefits. So by stepping on this little block and doing the squat, it puts most of the weight on the lead leg. So like 60, 70% which leaves about 30% of the weight on the leg that's on the box. So it leaves you free to stabilize yourself. What's cool about the leg that's on the box, though, is because you don't have a lot of weight on it, uh, the squat forces you past, the, uh, past depth. So if you have ankle mobility issues, it's a really, really good way to work on depth without uh, putting a whole lot of weight on one side and having the benefit of hammering the crap out of the leg that's doing most of the work. So you get a really, really, really awesome quad exercise. Like you're burning your legs up and you're working on ankle mobility at the same time. It's killing two birds with one stone. It's a really, really easy way for guys to ease into it. Now this is particularly for people that are struggling with imbalances, people that have had knee surgeries or back injuries. You don't need a lot of weight. You can like start with body weight. You, uh, and all we're doing is, you know, for people that have imbalances and they can't do a, a full barbell squat, this could be something that you can add to your rotation that can help you get there. And this is what I had to start with. When I lost the use of my leg, I had no option but to do this. I was trying all sorts of tricks, trying to figure out how I could do a squat with one leg that I barely had any strength in because the nerve was pinched off and one leg that worked like how do you train this is exactly how I trained a matter of fact it was so bad I could only do them on one side for a couple of months but you know adding this plus a, some other exercises eventually I got to the point where I could squat 135 pounds and I've been doing these ever since because it's a really, really awesome way to do individual leg isolation. So the next obvious question is, well, why not just do barbell squats with light weight? Well, you know, if you have that imbalance, it can be hard to get enough bar weight on the barbell to get a good workout. What's cool about doing split squats is you can use half the weight that you would normally need to have progressive overload. So I'm a 600 plus pound squatter. I need a lot of weight on the bar in order to get any effect out of it. 
but I can put 315, 325, 350, 400 max and and get all of the work I need done with three plates, you know, as opposed to having to load up 600, which is a lot of weight to be tossing around, even for training. Now, later on in this video, I'm going to hit 600 pounds for a double. I just wanted to see if I could do it. You know, it's been a while. I haven't uh, tried to hit 600 since competition where I got 608 on the platform and then I went for 630 and I would have got it, but I fumbled when I was on my way back up. But regardless, like that, you know, that's just something you don't want to train that heavy. It's, it's not good for you. It's dangerous. You don't have spotters. There's a million things that could go wrong when you have that much weight on your back. It's dangerous to walk out. Uh, Whereas if I put 315 on the bar, I'm now splitting that weight up, so I'm effectively getting a 600-pound workout on one leg. I'm putting all that weight direct, as much weight as I want to on that leg. If I shift my weight more towards the lead leg, I'm putting more of the weight on that lead leg. If I shift more onto the box, I'm putting more of that weight. So you can, you can tinker with the percentages to make it more manageable. But basically what I'm putting down is you can get just as much work done without having to load that barbell up and making it super hazardous. It works on ankle mobility and it's a really, really, really awesome quad exercise. So if your goal is not to be a power lifter, you just want good looking legs. You want to you wanna show them bad boys off to the ladies. There you go. Perfect exercise. I mean, as far as like an isolation workout goes, it's one of the best you can do, in my opinion. Uh, you know, and again, we're not talking like uh, apples and oranges, like comparing it to the actual Bulgarian split squats or other split squats. Are they more effective? Probably. But make it manageable, man. Make it so you can do it. You know, that's what we're talking about here is for FUDs like us, you know, trying to get back into the sport. Like, we can barely bend over and tie our shoes. What are we doing here? You know, I'm trying to make your life easier, darn it. <laughs> so here I'm at my working weight, 315 pounds. Now, I want to do four or five sets of these. Well, what, how, do you, how do you know? Four or five? Well, I don't know. It just depends on your program and your progression. For me, I'm kind of tinkering around, so I just sort of went until I felt like I had done enough work. Now, is that how scientific is that? <laughs> right now, I'm not really programming. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm tinkering with things to see what I'm going to include in my training program, and this is one of the accessories that I'm definitely going to add. Uh, here's the thing: 315 pounds, four sets, five reps each side. For a total of 10 reps, now remember, keep in mind, even though you are splitting the weight up, we'll say 60-40, 40, 40% uh, is still, that's still 5 reps at 40% on that off leg. So you're doing a total of 10 reps each set. You do 4 sets, that's 40 reps at 315 pounds, which is essentially still putting like 600 pounds on one leg. We'll say 500 to split the difference. But I'm telling you right now, by the time you get that fourth or fifth set done, you are fried. That is a ton of volume. Trust me, this this will this is a challenge. This will murder your legs. As a matter of fact, that is my challenge to you guys squatting. Start with 215, do five sets of split squats, five on each side, and tell me at the end of that fifth set if that wasn't a ton of volume. If it's like the most you felt like you've done in a long time, it adds up quick. Trust me. Why the hell would I trust a guy like you? Just a steroid freak working on in his garage. Fair enough. I happen to be one of the best in the world at my weight and age. Matter of fact, I think my squat is ranked second or third in the world. You could do worse. You know, does that make me an expert or does that just make me really strong? Yes. So now here... I go into, uh, like, I wanted to get some uh, work done on, on my quads specifically, so I loaded up 405 pounds, and I did a few sets of really, really narrow stance squats. So I got my feet almost in the, uh, what do they call it, uh, position of attention. Not quite that close together, but pretty close together. And as I'm squatting, I'm opening up my hips, and I'm sinking into that a little bit, and leaning forward just a hair, and that's putting all that weight directly on my quads. So uh, basically, I'm trying to burn my quads out. After I did all of that, 
after I did a few sets of 405 pounds, I was thinking, I just don't feel like I'm done. My ego has not been satisfied. So sitting there, I was getting ready to start painting Warhammer figurines, and just I just got this voice that said, do it, do it. And I'm like arguing with myself, no, no, come on, no, no. do it, do what? I'm gonna load up as much weight as I can on the barbell and just see if I can move the weight. It's the smartest thing in the world to do. So I worked up to 605 pounds for an ugly double. Yeah. And I was expecting to be lambasted when I put it on YouTube. I was I was just waiting for all the brigade to come out and say, oh, you didn't go down deep enough. <laughs> I guess when you put enough weight on the bar, people do realize, like, it's still 600 pounds. Can you even walk that out of the rack? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> now you sound like you're being a narcissist. <laughs> hey. It's a lot of weight, okay? <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. Sue me. And that was 495 pounds, and that moved really well. So now here's 545, and I, I think I'd do this for a double. And it moved pretty well. I thought the depth was good. It was right there, maybe a touch high. What they look for for depth on the platform is uh, you want the uh, crease of the hips right below the knees. That's considered a competition squat. So the crease of the hips is that little bend like right above, the, uh, at the top of the hip bone. They look for that, and it's gotta be below the knees. So it's doubtful that these would have counted in competition. But since I'm really, I mean, I'm not really, this isn't part of my workout. This is me trying to satisfy my ego and just see if I could still do it because uh, I did take some time off and I got sick and I just wanted to see where my strength level was at. I'm getting ready to start compete or like training for competition here. I'm not really sure when I should pull the trigger on that. Um, right now I'm in a cruise and for all you people that use PEDs, you know what that means. So I'm not blasting or doing anything crazy. Um, so a, a, a strength loss is to be expected, but I was very happy to see that uh, I'm moving the weight really, really well, which is a testament to my buddy Prophet Fear and Rockman, the advice that they have been giving me, which I've been mostly following, a little ego lifting in there. I, I know he hates it when I do that. He hates it. I know he hates it. Um, but I just like doing it. Okay? It's fun. Can't you have a little fun? You live a little. Jesus. Nobody bothers you for the things you like to do. Quit judging me. All right, here we go. 600 pounds even or as I like to say one half of your mama's ass <laughs> I'm training to be able to pick her up and take her out on a date <laughs> caveman style <laughs> oh man there's some guys if you make mom jokes they get bent out of shape I always tell them look when I'm talking about your mom I don't mean your mother specifically I mean your mom come on now <laughs> people are like well they start bagging up my mom and I'm like Oof, you're taking one for the team, brother. They have legitimately killed Star Wars. It is burnt to the ground, ashes, corpse. It is over. So that moved okay. Um, first rep moved fairly easy. I knew I didn't go down deep enough, so I, th I sat there and I thought for a second, go for a second rep. And, uh, they, yeah, I don't know. That voice has got me kill, almost killed more than a few times. I'll be on the bench and like, you know, you know you have an RPE 9 out of 10. And I'm like, yo, let's go for one more. Because I barely did that one. What could go wrong? You know, bench, you bail, you can pin yourself in your neck. Squat, there's, there's a lot that can go wrong. When you have 600 pounds on your back, uh, well, most guys will dump it. And then where's it going? That's 600 pounds. It's going to mess up your garage floor at the very least. Um, it could break all the stuff in your garage. It could bounce back, hit you in the leg. Guys that bail forward, um, I, there's guys that have broken their necks that way. As a matter of fact, recently a guy died because um, his spotter, oh my God, it was hard to watch that video. Like There was no way the spotter could help him. He couldn't control the weight, and he didn't know how to bail. No, what we're taught to do is you control the weight. Like, you, if you can't go up with it, you slowly lower it as much as you can and you lean it forward into the rack and let it sink into the safeties. 
That's the safest way to, to bail in a squat, and that's something we actually practice. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you're squatting heavy, have a plan for how to bail if you can't perform the squat. You know, a lot of guys don't think about it. They go to the gym, they load a bunch of weight on the bar, they do not think about what's going to happen if they can't hit it. I've seen guys squat on the power rack outside of the rack. What are you doing? What is the whole, that's the rack. It's got safety bars, so you set it on the bars, and they have the hooks on the outside of it, and they walk it out. They have no spotter. And then they bail, and then you watch them fall on the ground and a crumpled look like, you know, like, I don't know. What do you, you have, you're at, you're at, you're in a rack. Use it. Set the safeties. You know, be able to accommodate if you can't get the lift. I and mean, normally what I like to do is I like to set the safeties just lower than I would normally go normally. So you know where you, you, you get to a certain depth every time. Just have the safety set five, six inches below that. Same thing with bench. I like to set the bar in the safeties and roll it to my head to see where it's going to land. Is it going to hit my neck? Is it going to hit my chin? Where's that bar going to land if I bail on it? Use the safeties. I almost killed myself a couple months ago because I forgot to set the safeties. I thought they were there and I set the bar down as if the safeties were in place. So I almost dropped it on myself on purpose. And um, I'm really lucky. Man, that, I still have nightmares about that. But uh, that's something I'm a big proponent of, is safe. There's so many accidents that have happened, and I've, and I've seen some really, really horrific ones. And I'm going to preach gym safety, and I've almost killed myself more than on, on one occasion. Um, I used to run the spotting crews for the USPA, so spotting is something I'm, I'm really knowledgeable about. Uh, and it's something I'm also passionate about. There's an art to it. And when I see guys spotting squats, and they're standing behind the guy like they're going to what? Uh, grab his hair and pump him or you know what are you gonna do if he you got to get underneath the guy and then there should be two guys on the side if you have 600 pounds and you've got a spotter on each side that's divided up between two people that's 300 pounds each and if you stay with the weight everybody will be able to return that fairly easily but generally speaking um yeah you ideally you'd want to have a spotter on each side of you but if you're going to have a back spotter make sure he knows what the hell he's doing because if you're below him, he's not going to be able to pick you up. Um, I should do a video on spotting. I really should. Because it's, it's something I see in the gyms all the time. And it just it looks cute. And you can laugh at it. But if something goes wrong, those people are screwed. It's a false sense of security. What's beautiful about competition is um, when you have a good spotting crew, it frees you up as a lifter to really, really go for it. Because you know you have people that have your back. And if those people are trained and they know what they're doing, they can also save the lifter from injury. Uh, I don't know. It's just something something to think about. Safeties. You know, make sure, especially you guys that like to train alone, you don't set yourself up for failure. Have a plan. All right. Hopefully you guys found this informative. And you know, for all of my uh, Warhammer gaming friends that haven't really seen me do a video on lifting, welcome hopefully this is something that I, I hope to get you guys interested in the barbell sports i think that resistance training is important for everybody whether they uh whether they're into lifting or not uh, i think as we get older the number one thing that we can do to push off father time is resistance training it's the only thing that's been studied and proven to push off the effects of uh, aging to like you know like cognitive decline things of that nature uh, lifting is like the number one resistance training is the number one thing you can do as you get older and it doesn't matter what you're into what your hobbies are where where you're at in your stage of life how what kind of restrictions you have if you can move the limb and your legs don't work we got to figure out how to get your legs working but you should be doing curls you know what i mean whatever body part you can move you should be moving with resistance and if and if you have uh, ambulatory issues and you can't move then that's something we need to look at improving. There is nothing you can't improve. A little bit of work and consistency. And it's all about, like, it's not about where you're at. It's about where you're going. So don't let things like injuries hold you back. There is a, there's guys that I've started with that couldn't squat at all. They could do quarter squats at best. And a lot of those guys are going ass to grass now. And it took months to get there. And there's a way to do it. I'm your guy. I can help you out.
because I've been through a few of them myself. And I work with some good people, some physical therapists, massage therapists, uh, uh, medical professionals. I have at my disposal, we got a really good team that I work with, and uh, you guys haven't seen them on YouTube, and I really haven't highlighted them, but I, I am not an island, I do not train alone, I have a lot of help, and there's a lot of good people that I work with and get advice from, and if you're, having, if you're an older guy like me, or anybody, any age really, and you're struggling with injuries or things that are holding you back, or you think that you're too late to get started, nonsense, get with me, we'll get you going, I promise. You know, it's all about the process, baby. You gotta learn to love it. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you on the battlefield.